It's Waxing Miracle, baby. Hello, Waxers, and welcome to Waxing Miracle with Mains and Dutch. I'm your host, Mains. My colleague in the danger zone in Rainford is Mr. Neil Dutton. How are we, Neil? Very, very well, sir. Yourself? I'm good. Week one in the books, and both of our teams are undefeated. One more impressively so than t'other. And weirdly enough, the more impressive one is my team, which is not something that we have very often. But there you go. Um, normal fair this week. We're gonna we're gonna plug into the mains, get some get some takes from week one. We're, we're then gonna go proof positive on Neil's fancy darling, and we're gonna give you our teams of the week and talk you through. I mean, I had a I'll just full disclosure. I had a really good week last year. I got over a hundred and fifty fancy points, and still lost. As uh, everyone I played seemed to have um, Alvin Kamara, uh, you've got about 70 points. His name may crop up later. <laughs> you, shocking shocking news, um, Alvin Kamara against the Browns. Uh, yeah, but um, let's start, Neil, um, with a bit of plugging into the mains. So uh, there's a t- couple of things that I, I, I just want to... When you look at week one, you know, when most teams, let's say 28, 29, usually start with some kind of unbridled optimism, right? Anything could happen. Some have fears, some don't. But everyone thinks, well, we don't know what could happen. You know, in the NFL, things change all the time. But after week one, there's three teams, possibly four, who've got that feeling, that, that sense of relief. And that feeling is... Is there anything better than being in the NFL and thinking, you know what, my team has got a franchise quarterback? Thank it's, goodness gracious me. I, I don't think there's a better weight off your mind watching the NFL of knowing you've got a quarterback and you don't have to worry about it. All you have to worry about is them staying healthy. You know, if they're going to play, they're going to be productive. They're not going anywhere. They're not going to get dropped. It's just you can worry about everything else. So if you you know you want to if you're like you know spreading your anxieties around, there's so many places to look at. Whereas if you don't have a quarterback, it pretty much starts and ends there. It doesn't matter what else you've got. That's that's the key. So so the other thing as well, we're going to talk about four teams briefly on this. Um, two of the teams have an even better have an even better life because uh, they have quarterbacks on really low money for the next four to five years which allows them to spend a lot of money elsewhere which makes their teams really good and teams that are really good like win the Super Bowl so it's no real surprise that the Eagles managed to have so much talent on their roster last year when they were paying Carson Wentz and um, Nick Foles about the same money that me and you in. I think I probably made more than Nick just uh, first one Neil is, is, a, is a team bereft of franchise quarterbacks ad infinitum basically um, they had a, a a brief dalliance with, with a USC quarterback in the past, got them to a couple of NFC, AFC championship games they had a man who wagged his finger and said they'd win Super Bowl 3 and they did, however now they have Saviour Sam Mr. Sam Donald the New York Football Jets are quarterback relevant well, against a piss poor Detroit defense, don't you know Donald made the throws he had to. He made the plays he was allowed to, but it was an encouraging start. I mean, when you throw a pick six on your first play, that's a bad start. But to recover from that, not throw any more, and look composed, it was encouraging. But you know, that's you know, as as the late great Denny Green once said, you know, if you want to crown them, crown them, but. I think what what I see, Dutton, is, is you, you mentioned the pick six. Your first throw in the NFL when you're a 21 year old is a pick six. To then throw, to then for them for your team to score more points than they've ever scored out of week one or whatever it was, that shows some uh, what the what they would what Gorilla Monsoon in, in WWF would have called intestinal fortitude, Neil. Mm. Um, they're not the most talent rich team on offense. However, you know, they were able to move the ball up and down. Yeah, as you quite rightly mentioned, you know, 
it does help that the Lions have already decided that they don't like people telling them what to do. You know, I assume it, it sounds like Jim Caldwell, although they did win under Caldwell, was having some kind of holiday camp. Um, Matt Patricia's decided he doesn't want to do that, and they decided that they are all going to throw their toys out the pram. It would be surprising, given the strong track record Belichick's assistants have had when they go on to become head coaches of their own, if Matt Patricia were to flame out spectacularly early. Yeah, um, I think that is known as Operation Pink Pony, is my understanding, courtesy of uh, Mark Sessler from around the NFL. Um, next, te- next, next team who, who, who have, have a quarterback. Had Easy for you quarter- to say. Uh, yeah, I know. Had a quarterback previously, but traded him. Because they they realised that the guy who they had behind him um, had an Exocet missile as a right arm. Um, it's possibly the most unreal thing I've ever seen. Um, it makes Brett Favre look like he took a you know a, a knife to a gunfight. That's Patrick Mahomes. Um, it does help when you know you've got some kind of mighty mouse of five foot two. You can run back to uh, kick uh, punt returns for ninety yards and then somehow catch something over the middle and just speed away from people. Patrick Mahomes is Jeff George with the accuracy. <laughs> Which is a scary, a scary thought. I think I think as we we've, we've discussed many times, you know, Andy Reid has many detractors, of which you have been one on numerous occasions. I know that's a fact. It was mm-hmm. pre podcast, but I was there. Um one thing you can coach is offence. And if and if he decides to, to um trade a quarterback who'd just gone 11 and 5 and had his best season ever for Patrick for a guy who'd never played you probably should trust him especially as he's done it before you know I'm seeing McNabb went 10 and 6 in 2009 and he went nah you're done you're good and obviously it was intended to turn over to Kevin Cobb but then he got injured so again he had to he had to change on the fly and brought in Michael Vick and the Eagles went 10 and 6 Vick was in the MVP conversation and I say the one constant is Andy Reid. Um, final two teams uh, inextricably linked and also linked to Kansas City. Um, Minnesota may have had 57 quarterbacks on their roster last year who all could have won loads of games. But I believe Kirk, Kirk Cousins is better than all of them. Um, should they be concerned by uh, only one of two in the red zone? Well, we'll see. It's a small sample size. On the other but we've hand, seen that film before. On the other hand, um, I watched the quarterback um, go into the go into the red zone four times and scored twenty four points. I don't think I've ever seen that before. It's it, it's early doors, but I'm sure Minnesota are happy with Kirk Cousins and whisper it. Washington are, are, are letting out signals that they're much happier with Alex Smith. Having Alex Smith as your quarterback is such a big boost to what on paper should not be that an effective run game because Adrian Peterson is, you know, like Marv the Paranoid Android, is 50,000 times older than the universe. Chris Thompson is not a running back. He's a wide receiver who wears the 20s. But having Alex Smith there because, you know, he's a threat to run opens up all these other possibilities and that's why Adrian Peterson had his success. That's why Chris Thompson had his success. And it makes that offence that much more dangerous and don't get me wrong, Kirk Cousins, he wasn't, you know, he, he, he wasn't a Belisha Beacon back there. He could move. I think he was top five rushing touchdowns since 2015, I think. But Alex Smith is a lot more agile. So, Gruden, it's, we criticise him and, you know, and he doesn't get as much criticism as his brother because he hasn't quite earned it yet. Jay Gruden can coach offence as well. He oh, just I- if, he re- if he just remembers now, he's got a ground game. He doesn't have to ignore it. I think I think the problem with the problem for for Jay is he can coach offense, but it usually is from his own goal line to the red zone is where he's where he's been good for wherever he's been, whether that be Cincinnati or Washington. Um, the polar opposite of um, the feeling of you've got a quarterback and you've got a season is you haven't got a quarterback and the season's over before it's begun. Let's start in Buffalo. They traded, Josh Allen. Their be- they traded their best quarterback, right? And that best quarterback was AJ McCarron. That's not really, really going to help. No, and and it's as I said, 
I have been critical of Josh Allen just because I believe the numbers bear out the fact that it's very, very unlikely he's going to be successful in the NFL based in mind the type of college quarterback he was. However, what are you giving him here? No offensive line. A, a running back who, with no offensive line, you'd think, well, his name's Shady. You know, he loves loves the Dukes. He loves the Cuts. I mean, you've got to give him some room. You, he's throwing to Kelvin Benjamin and Zay frickin' Jones. I don't care who your quarterback is. They're going to get killed. And then you run the risk of, oh, we'll, we'll make improvements next off-season. It might be too late. We've seen what happens to quarterbacks who are a little bit skittish, who have the crap kicked out of them in their first year in the NFL. Yes, I am talking to you, Blaine Gabbert. It's interesting because they had this discussion on, on around the NFL, didn't they? And there was a kind of, you could kill him, or if he's good enough anyway, he'll be fine. I, I, I can't remember with you. Like, if you're okay and then you're protected, then you become good. But if you're okay and then you get destroyed, then you'll just be destroyed. So there's a chance that they could use this draft pick. He could have been good in the right situation. However, they don't give him the chance to be in the right situation and it's complete and utter disaster. Yeah, When they cut him after the third year and he goes somewhere else with a competent offensive coach, we may see a better version of, of uh, Josh Allen. But in the current situation with this dog dirt offence and dearth of talent around him, I feel for the lad, I really do. It's it's September of 2018, Neil. Um, so Thanks for that. There's three teams who have kind of had safe quarterback situations for 14 years. Um, they are uh, the San, the he did it again. Los Angeles Chargers, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the New York Football Giants. Mm-hmm. There's a chance that two thirds, if not all, of these. Uh, quarterbacks fall off a cliff this year well one of them did throw for 420 yards at the weekend but it was he's, playing a very a p- very very poor defence it should be said he's he's fine I think I saw Ben Roethlisberger and was concerned ok it rained ok it was Miles Garrett but there were things that I just didn't like Eli Manning we've had concerns over him for two years previously we look at the Jacksonville Jaguars defense and the fact that he's got Eric Flowers as a as a a, 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 tra- a traffic cone at right tackle doesn't help. But there's cause for concern in Pittsburgh and New York for me. One thing I will say in Roethlisberger's favor, I am holding up a piece of paper now that obviously everyone else can see, and there's a word I've written. Would you like to just repeat what it is? Uh, you're you're suge- you're suggesting that Ben Roethlisberger isn't a traveller. No, he doesn't. He travels worse than Austrian cuisine. But it can't be argued that he looked horrible. He completed, I think, was it 56% of his passes. He was intercepted three times. He lost two fumbles. The weather obviously played a part. But that game should have been out of, out of you know, they let Cleveland come back into them because they weren't aggressive enough on offense and Ben was terrible. Mm, absolutely. When it comes to Eli, it's say, yeah. Don't forget, as good as that 68-yard touchdown run was, that's what you're getting instead of competent quarterback play. And I hate to bother you, but you're not getting that every week. He he had more runs that went for less than five yards than any other rookie, I think, in NFL history on debut who had a 100-yard game. There was nothing there for the poor sod, but you took that instead of a quarterback. Live with it. But it's that kind of idea, like Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley can be the next Zeke Elliott. Um, just so you know, um, that offensive line that's in Dallas when Zeke first played isn't in isn't in New York, and it's not no. even close. Yo, I mean, if he even if he is the next Zeke Elliott, the one thing you can say in a positive thing about Saquon Barkley is he's going to have so many opportunities to make lots of new friends. Because he's going to be facing nine men in the box every single friggin' play. Yeah. So, you know, get used to it. You're going to be... I mean, Curtis Martin apparently used to have to sit in a shower for an hour in a cold shower after a game because he took that much punishment and the cold shower was just to try and re-energise his muscles again. This is your future, Saquon. Mm. But don't don't worry because Eli hasn't lost a step. Apparently. Can, uh, final one, Dutton, is... is not that you don't haven't got a quarterback, but you don't know whether you have or you haven't, and that's even worse. 
I would like us to play our favourite game, uh, which is um, since since um, since Carson Wentz tore his ACL, how many touchdown passes has he thrown? One. In that same period of time, how many has um, Dak Prescott through? One. I'm going to let that stew for anyone who doesn't know that stat. So, since that's mean after Carson Wentz did his ACL, he still threw a touchdown. Yeah. And Dak Prescott has played in all the games since then and has also only thrown one. This is a major, major cause for concern in Dallas. Apparently, they had their lowest fit viewing figures um, for their, for, since 2009. Why is this a surprise? That offense is putrid, it's predictable. Jason Garrett, I say, no one claps better in the NFL than Jason Garrett. He's an absolute, you know, he's a, he's a first ballot Hall of Fame clapper. Scott Linehan's an idiot. The offense is undermanned. They've got no receivers of note. They've got no tight ends of consequence. They are slamming Ezekiel Elliott into the wall, into the line, every single play. They're not getting him involved. They're not running screens. They're not getting him involved as a receiver. And But it's okay because the defense will bail him out. No, it won't. They did quite well against Cam because Cam looked a bit rusty and was running the ball an awful lot. Well, that means he can't. He's got no one open, so he's going to have to run. Don't, don't, don't take the W on this one, Rod. You know, Mr. Marinelli. This offense is that team's terrible, and they're going to get worse. But by all means, please, please pay Dak Prescott twenty-eight million dollars a year. I will piss myself. The the thing is, um, and as we said about you know. The teams with rookie quarterbacks that gives them the opportunity to spend money elsewhere to give them a cha- a window of time where they've got a cheap quarterback and they can spend it everywhere else. At the moment, the Cowboys have a cheap quarterback, cheaper than most, as he was a fifth round draft pick, and have no talent. So that money is, I assume, buried under a tree somewhere. No, no. Do you know where that money's going? To Tony Romo still. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and is, yeah. and Jason Witten. And Des Bryant. Fantastic. Because you keep kicking these contracts down the road. It doesn't just disappear when they retire. But if you actually ran your NFL billion-dollar franchise like a business and not a weekend retreat, you'd know this. Don't be wrong. It makes me angry because I say Zeke Elliott is a special talent. Don't be wrong. He's probably a POS as well. But he's a special talent who should be enjoyed. But I can't enjoy him. Because he's not getting anything. And he's just running into, you know, slamming his head against the brick wall time and time again. But once I take that, once the fantasy analyst comes off me, and the fact that I took him everywhere in fantasy, obviously in my drafts, but you know I'm I'm a team player. I will I will happily watch their offense blip in and out on red zone because there's nothing to see. Yeah, it was it was good not to watch them. Um, so let's let's move on. Let's let's go away from the hot takes from the from the plugged into the mains, and let's get your fancy darling. Hello, darling. Well, I've already mentioned them. Um, it's a difference between road splits and home splits. Ben Roethlisberger, since 2013, averages 314 passing yards at home against 269 on the road, Two passing, 2.5 passing touchdowns against 1.28, and averages 27 PPR points at home to 18.4 away. They're playing the Chiefs. The Chiefs' defence is a sieve. They let Phil Rivers dink and dunk all the way up the field, all up and down the field, and if his receivers could catch the ball, Rivers would have had a 500-yard game. So Roethlisberger, I think, can be trusted this week. I actually had him in two leagues last week and didn't start him. Uh, so, you know, pat on the back for me there. I went the, with the red rifle in both of them. And he wasn't great, but he was better than Ben Roethlisberger. So I think Roethlisberger is someone you can put in with relative ease and comfort this week and I know how disgusting that sounds as soon as I said it yeah let's let's move on so fancy darling big Ben Roethlisberger done let's get these people talking about our fancy teams of the week mains and dots daily fantasy team of the week show me the money Neil fancy team of the week DraftKings you get 50k you split it up. Quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, a flex, and a defense. Start me off with your quarterback, please. Quarterback, 6,100, Patrick Mahomes. 
256 yards, four touchdowns on debut, 14.6 average depth of throw. I don't care who they're playing. 14.6 yards. Um, I'm going. I'm going the other way. Um, I'm going. Uh, Case Keenum, five thousand eight hundred. He's playing the Oakland Raiders. Um, he'll have similar yards. He'll have similar touchdowns, and he'll have less interceptions than last week. Mainly due to the fact that Oakland are going to be garbage on defense. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by Case Keenum. I don't know what I expected, but he was basically he was just Case Keenum, it, and that's Minnesota Case Keenum. And for, for Denver, that's a good thing. The good thing about Case Keenum is um, he doesn't care uh, if you're covered or not. He's going to try and force the ball in. 28.2% of his throws were into tight coverage, and that's where the defender was within one yard of receiver at time of completion or incompletion. That was the highest rate in the NFL. Now, he threw some interceptions, he threw some touchdowns. He is going for it if he thinks it's there. And that was against, you know... Seattle, who, when Earl Thomas is on the field, they're good. When they're not, when he's not, they're not. But he's going to have it a little bit easier this week against an absolute shocking defence, which we've talked about ad nauseum already. Him running back one, Neil. My running back one, 9,500. Alvin Kamara, no matter what. 141 yards from scrimmage on week one. In his last six home games, he's averaged 119 yards from scrimmage. That's a lot, right? It pays the bills. So, so I'm, I watched, because I'm a Washington fan, Washington play Arizona last week. I watched what Adrian Peterson and Chris Thompson did to Arizona's rush rush defence and linebackers when out in space and this week the Arizona Cardinals are away at the LA Rams for 9,200 I give you Todd Gurley he looked really good against the Raiders as well he looked fantastic and they couldn't they could not stop Thompson and Peterson I don't think they've got a chance of stopping Gurley no uh, running back 2 Neil. 5,500, Adrian Peterson. 166 yards from scrimmage on debut. Became, I think, was 10th overall tenth in rushing overall. yards. Got his, yeah, got his 100th rushing touchdown, going level with Marshall Falk and Sean Alexander. As we said, the Colts were gashed on the ground by Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon. So, sure, Joe Mixon was pretty much a workhorse. He had most of the... Most of the backfield touches. I think having the ability to mix and match, you know, pick your poison. You can have Peterson or you can have Chris Thompson. Um, but I think I like Adrian Peterson because we've seen that he is going to be the bell cow workhorse, as it were. First and second down, Adrian Peterson's on the field. Um, my running back too uh, should should have been in my league of record as my running back, mainly due to the fact that I had Lev Bell and he didn't play. It's James Connor. He's playing Kansas City. Um, Melvin Gordon got over 100, 150 yards, I think, from scrimmage against the Kansas City Chiefs last week. Um, Connor went for over, over 100 and a, and a score. I expect something similar this week. 6,700. James Connor, Pittsburgh Steelers. The only running back to handle 100% of his team's backfield touches in 2018. Now, we've seen what the splits are like running backs with the Steelers when Lev Bell is there. And what they're like when he's not there. So please tell me why running backs are important. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a good day for Lev Bell. Should be paid twenty five million dollars. Don't get me wrong, Le'Veon Bell is much more talented than James Conner in my opinion. However, he's not so much more talented that I'm willing to pay him two hundred times what James Conner is earning. That becomes the issue for Lev Bell. Yeah, not for me. Uh, wide receiver one, Neil. Wide receiver one. He featured last week and did me no, you know, did me no harm. Emmanuel Sanders, uh, ten for one hundred thirty-five and a touchdown last week, and he has a rather nice matchup this week against the Raiders. Let me see here. Cooper Cup, who plays predominantly out the slot, where Emmanuel Sanders lined up mostly on Sunday. Uh, Sunday. 
excuse me, um, he had 16.2 fantasy points from the slot alone against the Raiders, and Sanders took 70% of his snaps in the slot last week. Um, my wide receiver one um, is from the game I've just discussed. Um, in in the San Diego Kansas City game, as Neil said, um, Phil Rivers shared the ball around, and I think three three people went over a hundred yards receiving. Um, just so you know, a big Ben Roethlisberger won't share the ball around. He'll give it to one person multiple times, um, and Kansas City won't be able to stop him. As you will see, I'm about to run out of money very soon because for eight thousand eight hundred pound dollars, sorry, Antonio Brown is my wide receiver one. I hear he's quite good. He is okay, and do you know what we need? What should be noted is how good Denzel Ward played him as a as a as a rookie cornerback last week against the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, absolutely. The Cleveland Browns, sorry. Yeah. Um, as as you as you will have noticed, if anyone's good at maths, my team's about to get tremendously interesting towards the bottom. Um, Neil, who's your wide receiver two? Uh, wide receiver two is Jarvis Landry, a six thousand three hundred, and he's got a touchdown catch in his last three games against the NFC opponents. They're playing the New Orleans Saints, of course. He actually a lot of things that I have criticised Jarvis Landry for in the sense that he plays four yards off the line of scrimmage. He was second in the NFL in air yards at the weekend behind only Julio Jones I thought he was I thought he was excellent against Pittsburgh Dutton. and there was a lot of move the chains 20 plus yard plays as well which I was like okay you can't it, it, if, the, if he can do this it's a game changing it's a game changing sign and because that's not what you expected him to do no and we should remind, you know remember that his offensive coordinator comes from a team that had a player who probably profiles best as a slot receiver who gets moved around to create mismatches and get the ball. So I'm not saying that Todd Haley is going to turn Jarvis Landry into Antonio Brown, but that's the blueprint he's working from. Exactly, exactly. Um, my wide receiver too caught five balls for 81 yards last week, and this week he plays the Bills. Um, I expect... Um, Phil Rivers has passed the ball out a lot for 3,700 I give you Mike Williams Mike Williams had an interesting game um, he had an 11% share of the targets which was tied for second and he had only only had 18% of the team air yards which was fourth but again I think the Chiefs were letting Phil Rivers dink and dunk mm. and Williams big body open wide open in the middle of the field might change might not but not a terrible pick I don't hate it but for 3,700, it was one of them. That, what, what have you got left? Uh, who's your wide receiver? Three, Neil. 4,800, 100 yard. First 100 yard game in the NFL. Excuse me, what was it? Seven catches for 114 yards. Kenny Galladay. <laughs> you've been waiting to you've been waiting to bring, put him into your daily fantasy team for a long time, Neil. Now you can. It's just it's it, it does heart, it break my heart that I was probably. About three weeks behind JJ Zacharyson in proclaiming my love for Kenny Galladay last year, and that everyone will always say he's JJ's boy, but I like to think he's nearly mine. You, you, you story of story of our love lives pre twenty five there from Neil Dutton. Yeah. Um, in my wide receiver, wide wide receiver three it was one of the highest targeted players in the NFL. I think he had over ten targets last week. Caught six for 62 yards and the score. Um, his team are playing the Houston Texans. He plays for the Tennessee Titans. He costs 5,100 and his name is Corey Davis. Yeah, 35% share of the targets. Uh, 14 targets, only six receptions. So slightly inefficient, but the volume is there. You would imagine that volume is going to either be stable or may go up a touch, obviously, because they've lost Delaney Walker. Um, he did have 41% of their air yards. So, obviously, Marcus Mariota's health is a concern yeah. because the backup is Blaine Gabbert. But we've seen that Corey Davis was a big part of their offense going in, and it's unlikely that that's going to drop. I think. I think as we as we our, our, our weekly reminder that the DFS is PPR. So the fact that you someone you you want to pick has got four is 
was targeted 14 times can only be a good thing. It would help if he caught more than six. It would help. Um, Neil, uh, who's your tight end? The tight end, and I believe you're actually going to echo this, 3,800 is George Kittle. Now, I didn't think he was going to have a terribly good day. The Vikings are very good against tight ends. Was my little stat for George Kittle. Um, we'll say he had 28.1%, sorry, he had a 26% target share, which was first on the team. And he had 29% of the air yards, which was first on the team. He was targeted on 29% of his routes, which is a ridiculous high. He's got Jimmy Garoppolo's eye. Um, so, again, volume is going to be there. They're facing a t- the Detroit Lions allowed the Jets to target their tight ends. The Jets do not target tight ends and haven't since 2012, aside from a brief dalliance with Austin Safarian Jenkins. Neil Sterling was on the verge of being fantasy relevant against the Detroit Lions. George Kittle is an awful lot more attractive a footballing prospect than Neil Sterling. So, especially at this price, I still can't believe when I was doing a waiver wire column, I didn't put him in this because I thought there's no way this is actually going to be accurate by the time this is published. He was owned in 30% of ESPN leagues. I, I'm not going to look now, but I assure you that number has gone up exponentially. In 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 your in the league of record that you play in, Neil, he's definitely owned this week. Uh, as um, I had Greg Greg Olson back to back seasons where he's done his leg. His foot same, foot. <laughs> same foot, same uh, foot. My tight ends. Uh, Five yard, five receptions for ninety yards. Played for San Francisco. Kyle's got a, a tight end that he loved back in the mix. That can only be good for George Kill. Do you know it's one of the the sad things, but also the fortunate things is that prior to this season, Delaney Walker and Greg Olson both signed two year contract extensions. Well done, boys. Exactly. exactly. Get your money. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Neil, who's your flex? Uh, my flex is Jack Doyle. Eh, say. Um, the Colts weren't great. Look, at least looked like he could throw the ball. Did take a massive late hit from uh, Sean Williams. Thankfully, got up from. But you saw that Jack Doyle remained one of his targets. To say, 660-odd days since his last game, but the love that he has for Jack Doyle has burned with the intensity of a 1,000 suns throughout that whole time. He targeted Doyle 10 times, two red zone targets as well. Jack Doyle, 4,000. The Redskins over the years have been very friendly to tight ends. So again, PPR leagues, yeah, I would like some of that, please. Um, bit of a flyer here, Neil. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk you through some logic, right? When you play a really good defence with really good corners and safeties sometimes you have to think well maybe my first two options won't be open because they're against the best two but the third option is more likely to be open because he is playing the weakest person so therefore you think okay I'm going to go who's the wide receiver three on certain teams this week after a decent performance five for 69 and a score I'm going for Geronimo Allison, wide, uh, wide receiver, Green Bay Packers against the Minnesota Vikings. So 22% of the targets against the Vikings, which was good for second, but had 32% of the air yards, air yards, which was first. So, yeah, I mean, he's not going to get Xavier Rhodes. That, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes yeah. you go, you go it's, it's dead easy to go, like, oh, God. Minnesota have got Rhodes and, and all these guys in the, in the in the secondary, but like I know he may still only have one leg, but Aaron Rodgers is going to throw it to someone, and someone's going to be open because it's Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. So maybe maybe you go with it. You can have tremendous cornerbacks, but I don't think they can catch him. No. Um, final Neil, defense and special teams. Who you got? Spencer special teams, I've got coach Wade Phillips, Rams, 3,700, because the Cardinals, and especially Sam Bradford, looked utter shite. Was that unbel- Was that the, like, I couldn't believe how bad they were. It was, like, frightening. 
Like, I expected. I didn't expect fireworks. I expected efficiency yeah. on a limited scale, mm-hmm. and what I saw was a massive do- uh, dog turd. There's a lot of people who like pick David David Johnson who are like, ooh, that's <laughs> I, I, not good. I, I, I was led to believe there'd be points, uh, though they were absolutely terrible. Um, Sam Bradford, <sighs> I, I'd say Washington are probably an underrated team. Because of the division they play in, because it's Washington, it's everyone likes to bash them. But they 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 beat Arizona like a ginger step, child. They really did. They did. They did. But Arizona didn't help themselves either. No, no. Uh, and but I think you know it makes sense to them pick Wade with all those weapons. Speaking of a team with a load of weapons and a shiny new toy, my defense and special teams um, is a. Uh, the Chicago Bears, 2,800. Uh, they're playing Seattle on Monday Night Football. Um, run for your, that First of all, as Neil, Neil's face shaking head and the noise of exasperation, yes, someone decided that was a good Monday Night Football game. Um, but yeah, um, Khalil Mack will probably still be on a, on a uh, snap count, but uh, it did all right on the snap count against Green Bay. Um Seattle are nowhere near as good as Green Bay. Yeah, I expect them to, to feast on that offensive line. He is going to live in the Seattle backfield uh, because Oak, uh, sorry, Green Bay's right tackle is an awful lot better than George Fant. And he looked like... He, they Give him the due. They gave him no help against Khalil Mack. And he held up well, but couldn't stop him. George Fant may as well be a hologram. Khalil Mack, put it this way, it's a good thing Russell Wilson is mobile because yeah. he's going to have to do an awful lot of escaping this week. Yeah, as you said, I believe um, Khalil Mack has already put put in a claim to the US Postal Service to have all his mail delivered into uh, Seattle's backfield. So Neil, let's recap. Uh, who's your quarterback? Quarterback is Patrick Mahomes. I've got Case Keenum. Uh, running back, one. Alvin Kamara. I've got Todd Gurley. The second, as it says here. Um, yeah, uh, who's your running back two? I think he's the third, isn't he? I don't know, it just says two here. I thought he was the third, but anyway. Yeah. Um, Adrian Peterson. I've got uh, James Conner. Uh, wide receiver one. Emmanuel Sanders. I've got Antonio Brown. Uh, wide receiver two. Jarvis Landry. I've got Mike Williams from the LA Chargers. Uh, wide receiver three. Baby Tron. I've got Corey Davis. Uh, tight end. George Kittle. I co sign that. A flex. Jack Doyle. I've got Geronimo yeah. Allison. Geronimo. And defence and special teams. Uh, your Los Angeles Rams. I have got the Chicago Bears. Neil, that's it. Wrapped up and we're ready for week two. And we see we see where we stand after that. Some Absolutely. Teams will, some teams will be feeling good about themselves, other teams not. And we will discuss that next week. Where can people catch you between now and then? Obviously on the Twitter, at Endleton13. Uh, this week, I've been very busy. I had the Gillespie, the GLSP projections for uh, Rotoviz for the quarterbacks and tight ends. I had the wide receiver usage report, which looked at targets, cloudy situations now appearing clear, and some players who got off to a pretty slow start. I had five key stats you should know through week one. That was from number five. And I also had a waiver wire column, but obviously that's probably going to be slightly out of date by now. That came out first thing on Monday morning. Uh, So I'll be alternating that with three other guys from Rotoviz for the rest of the season. But the others will be weekly staples. So I say if you've got any... A few people have actually reached out to me for, you know, lineup choices or... Roster moves. It's, it's very, very. You know, it's, I, I generally do appreciate people asking me because there's a lot more better people to ask. But at least I, I promise I will give you an honest answer. And thank you once again for for asking. Um, I, I just can't believe that someone's gave Neil a stats column. That's like unbelievable, uh, and it's made Neil's day. I made mine reading it because you could understand how excited he was while reading that column. Neil, that's it. We're we're off. We're ready. It's gonna be it's it's week two, it's coming up and these top guys are out.